In this video, I'll be demonstrating how to design reinforcement inside Arisa Floor ES. We'll start with a model that I've already built with a slab edge and columns and walls. And if I render it here, we can just see what it looks like a little bit. Uh, zoom in a little bit. We can see that I've got some openings in this model. It's a little bit irregular in its shape um, to help demonstrate how versatile Arisa Floor ES can be. So I'm going to go to Plan View, and I'm going to start by just talking about the design rules. So if we go to the Slab Design Rules, that's a tab here on the Data Entry Toolbar. You start opening up here, and we have a default of a north-south rebar strip and an east-west rebar. Uh, the general tab here will open up, and this will be a spreadsheet based, but we can also op launch a dialog, which will give us a better picture of what we're looking at. The general tab will define here the top cover and the bottom cover, and you can see that's displayed in the spreadsheet as well. And we're looking at the north-south rebar right now, and I can define the type of bar I'm going to be using. So the top bar, we can say it's going to be either a number 5, as it is set by default, or you can adjust it. So I'm going to make it actually be a number 6 bar on the top, and the bottom bar here, I'm going to adjust that to be a number 7 bar. The program is going to design the spacing of the bars for us. So I have the minimum spacing to the maximum spacing, and I can put the, that from right now, it's going from 3 inches all the way up to 18 inches. I also have a maximum bending check. So that means that maybe I don't know all the loads on my structure just yet, and I don't want to go up to 100% stress. So I can put this maybe at 0.9, so the program will design that up to 90%. But right now I'm going to leave that at 1. I can also go to the deflection tab. So here you can see the program is going to size this, the rebar here, uh, based on this deflection controller. So I have a ratio listed, and it tells me the dead load and the live load, the dead load plus live load and the ratio of that, as well as the deflection, and this is going to be your absolute deflection. Um, so if we look here at the none, uh, I can also prescribe different load ca categories with the other deflection. I'm going to leave that as blank for now. So we'll leave this as our prescribed deflections, and I'm going to say OK. Now, the idea is that this is a two-way slab. So north, south, and east, west are just guidelines, and they just are meant to be perpendicular to each other. They don't actually need to be directly north, south, or east, west, but they should be perpendicular. So what I'm going to close this down, and I'm going to start by defining the strips. To define a, a design strip, what I do is I use the support line tool, which is on the left side of my screen, and it tells me here that it's going to define those the design strip width either automatically or with a fixed width. Uh, typically, I'm going to let the program automatically size the width of the strip, so I'll leave it at automatic. I'm going to tell the program the orientation is going to be north-south. There's going to be a number of cuts inside of each design strip, and that's going to default to 50 cuts. Uh, so you'll see internally the program is going to slice that design strip up 50 times and design at 50 different locations. I'm going to leave that at 50 as the default. The design rule here is what we just talked about, so that's that north-south strip rebar, and I'm going to tell the program here that uh, to, to use a prefix of SL for support line. When I push apply, I now have a pencil and I can draw the design strips. What I'm really defining is the support line, so I'm clicking on from support to support, and I can drag that mouse all the way across the screen. Wherever a support line hits, it'll then break it into a span. So I can go all the way up to the top here. I'm going to keep drawing that across the entire slab, north-south direction, and I'm going to find all these different support lines here as we go. So I'm clicking on walls as well as columns as my supports, and that's going to be your supports here that you're finding as you draw your support line. Now you'll notice I'm not clicking on this, this top location. This is a beam that's drawn in here, so you do not need to draw a support line over a beam. That beam is going to be considering its own tributary area of that location. So I'm going to draw the support lines all the way vertically up the structure for my north-south support lines. Once I've got them all in place, I'm going to go ahead and draw my east-west. Now it's a little confusing sometimes to draw on top, so what you can do is use your tools up on the top right corner and display now not the north-south support lines, I'm going to say display the east-west. Since I don't have any drawn in just yet, it clears them all out. I'm going to go back to the support lines, and this time here I'm going to, instead of choosing the north-south, I'm going to choose east-west, and the design rule to match that, that east-west rebar. I'm going to say apply, and I'm going to draw my rebar reinforcement across there from the support line. So I click on each support point. Now this one kind of turns a little bit, and that's okay. I'm going to draw it across that. 
Um, I'm also going to here zoom in a little bit and see I'm going to click it from a column to a wall edge. I have a beam located right here across this elevator opening. So I'm not going to draw another support line over that. I'm just going to go to the edge here and draw in another support line here on the edge. I'm going to continue to draw the support lines all the way across my structure. So you'll see you can, you can draw all the way across and you'll note every time you hit that support point it'll break that up for you. If you're unsure if they're going to line up you might just click from each point so it breaks it up for you. Okay, so the last of my east-west support lines are now in place. Now to see them all, to make sure I have north-south and east-west in all directions as I wanted, I can go up to the icon and say all. When I see that it, they are all placed how I want them, then I'm a, I can kind of go from there. If I needed to modify any of them, I might at this point try to take a look at my support lines. So for example, SL10 and SL11, these two support lines are a little short and I have a large overhang in this area and I do want to design that overhang here with the support lines. So what I can do is I can use my support line tool one more time and instead of drawing it I can go ahead and say modify the properties. I'm actually going to go over to modify area and say extend support line. So by clicking on extend support line I can say apply and it's going to ask me to click on the support line I'd like to extend. So I'm going to click on this, the edge over here closest to the portion I'm going to extend and I can see that the uh, icon changes a little bit and it gives me a leader and I can click to the edge there. Now it's okay that it's a little crooked, that's fine. Uh, you can try to get as close as you can to straight there. If you have a, no point, it will click along the slab edge there. So it's, it's going to be okay that it's not directly uh, straight. Once I have all of those extended there, I could do some more extensions, but what I'd like to do now is generate the strips. What we're looking at right now is just the support line, but what we're interested in is the design strip. The support line is going to go internally along the design strip. So there, on the portion on the left side of your screen, right underneath support line, you'll see that something says generate strips. This is automatically creating the design strips for you once I click on that based on the width that is, we have here automatically defined. The program calculates that width based on the ACI rules. So it's a little bit hard to see when they're all located here. What we can do again is show just maybe the north-south uh, design strips instead of support lines this time. So I now have design strips defined and I see that I really like the way the strips are defined for a lot of the areas but there's just a couple areas that it's gotten a little confused about what's happening and where it should be defined. So the tributary area of this design strip here is a little bit large. Um, it goes into the wall, it kind of crosses right over into the elevator shaft. So what I'll do is I'm going to go ahead and use the support line here tool and I'm going to modify that area. I'm going to modify the design strip area. So the easiest way here for this one portion I'd like to make a little smaller is use the redraw, redraw edges tool. I click on apply, I zoom in a little bit, and now I click on the, the portion I'd like to redraw. So I want to redraw this portion here. It's a little bit too far over. As soon as I click on that edge, I can drag it back and I see that it shortens that area. Now it turned purple and that means that it's telling me that I've edited, edited the actual design strip and that can be helpful so that you know which ones you've edited versus which ones the program created. So you'll notice only the purple ones are going to be ones that I've edited. I can click on this one here, I'm going to make it a little bit shorter and I can click on this one make it a little bit longer on the top portion. So I'm basically dragging the areas there. Now this one's overlapping. That's not going to be horrible but I'd like to make it as, uh, meet that edge there. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and use support line here one more time. I'm going to modify it but instead of redraw edges I'm going to say edge align tool and that allows me to pick an edge that I'd like to align it to. So this edge I would like to align it to that edge and you can see it cuts it back. The same thing can happen on this side so I'd like to align this edge to this edge and it cuts it back. So this can be a great tool. Sometimes there's overlaps like this so I can click on that one and I can click on this edge right here and now it cuts it back. So now I've got all of my north-south set up. What I can also do is go over to my east-west. So instead of going to east-west on this, the, um, the support lines, which you can also check one more time, but you can also go to the design strips. So looking at the design strips now, I see I have some similar issues here where I need to clean this up. 
So I'm going to go ahead and go to support line and I'm going to use the edge align tool when I can. That one's an easy one to sort of clean up this edges. Um, I can see, let's see, I'm going to use this edge align tool where I can here, cut this back here. I'm going to cut this one back here. And you can zip around the structure and clean up all of your different support lines that you'd like to and design strip areas that you want to to match around the areas. Um, sometimes better tools, redraw edges, can work better for you versus other ones. If you make mistakes, you can always delete the area and just have the program regenerate it. That's a helpful thing. Um, you can see some of these kind of go far over extending. Maybe the redraw edges tool would help us to extend this a little bit shorter. This is going right over top of a beam. So maybe we don't want to make it that long. That beam is going to be contributing to the design of that area. Um, so we don't need to make it that long. Um, so it's up to you how, you how you define these edges there. So once you've gotten your model to a place where you're happy with all the design strips, all of them are created, what you can then do is solve the model. Once you've solved the model, it's going to run through a design of all of the design strips. Each one, as I mentioned, are going to get cut into design cuts internally, automatically. The program is going to design for all of those cuts, and the design strip is going to be giving us the envelope solution of, of the reinforcement required along all of the cuts. Uh, once it's going through, it's, we see it's going through each support line individually, designing them, and then we'll see here what we have at the end of our solution. So once we finish and we get the results, we can display them right on our screen. So you can see here I have nor I have north south bottom bars, and it shows me as I zoom in the reinforcement on the bottom. I can then also see the north south top bars, and it gives me the reinforcement along the top, and I also can see the total bars. So I see the reinforcement along the top and the bottom for the north-south. You can see this for east-west individually. You can also show all bars. Sometimes that can be difficult to read. So what I would recommend is starting out by just taking a look at the north-south versus the, the east-west. And you can review it that way. Also, all of these designs are available for you right in spreadsheet format as well. So if you really want to get into what's going on inside of the spreadsheet, the slab results rebar, is going to give you a spreadsheet format of all the reinforcement that was designed based on the support line, the span, and then it breaks it into the, the design strip area there. So you'll notice if we take off of all of the reinforcement, the program is going to be breaking this into design strips, but beyond the design strip, it goes farther and shows you the column strips and the mid strip left and the mid strip right. So the column strips are going to be patched here in, internally. You can also click on the detail report, and when you click on that detail report, you can open that up and review here for the total design strip. This is the forces that you're seeing and the moments and shear, as well as the deflection results. But for reinforcement, you're going to want to look at the column strips and the mid strips location. So those re reinforcement, you'll see it's broken into the column strip reinforcement, and it'll give you a, a diagram of that and it tells you in spreadsheet type of format as well as your mid strip right and your mid strip left and you get your reinforcement for that. Thank you so much for your attention today.